Hello. Um, happy Juneteenth. It is the 19th of June, Friday, in the year of 2020. Um, hope this video finds you well. So um, in this video, we're going to learn how to make a one cool thing drawing. Um, and we'll learn a lot about observational drawing techniques. So that's not exactly drawing from a photograph or abstracting something or making it look cartoony or stylized or grotesque. Um, we're just going to draw the world as we see it um, to the best of our abilities. Um, so the one cool thing I chose is this purple hippo. Um, her name is Samantha. And my husband and my dog, um, she was kind enough to let me borrow this. And it's, um, yeah, I just think it's a delightful, smiling creature with a giant mouth. And I like things with giant mouths. I like eating things with giant mouths. They get to eat a lot. So it's like a, you know, hungry hippo if you ever played that game. But yeah, there's Samantha the Purple Hippo. That's my one cool thing. Um, and we're going to make a drawing. So something that kind of looks like this. We're going to try and have the object take up the entire picture plane. Um, you only have to use black and white. Um, and um, you don't have to think about the environment or adding secondary objects or any sort of background. All you just need to focus on is the one cool thing. Um, bring that up close. And, um, yeah, I guess when we don't really get into value or shading or highlights, but we do use contour, so those lines that go inside the form that make it look 3D. We'll also use texture. And um, we can apply, I guess, a drop shadow by making thicker lines. So this is kind of a typical setting where we have lights above us and um, yeah, shadows tend to be on the bottom of things and the lights above you. All right. So um, yeah, I'll walk you through making um, your own one cool thing drawn. Um, you need a sheet of paper. You need some tape. You need some sort of flat surface to draw on. I'm just using the back of a notebook. You can use a book. You can use a cardboard sheet. Anything you got. Um, pencil to start with. And an eraser. Um, get this. Oh, an easel as well. Easel and some sort of I'm also borrowing um, our dog Shaylee's crate. Um, but any sort of table or anything to kind of prop your um, thing on. Um, here's the easel. Um, so I guess um, you have the tape. I'm using that to um, attach it to that um, cardboard sheet. So I just rolled up the tape. I'm going to lint it so you can put it on your shirt. Maybe a cotton shirt is pretty good to use. And that makes the lint from the shirt makes the tape less sticky, so that um, it makes some um, kind of sticking the or um, removing the tape from the paper easier. It's not going to tear. Um, add some pre-rolled pieces of tape. I'm going to grab. Okay. So. Here we go, our linted sheets of tape are at all four corners of the sheet of the paper. I'm going to tape it here. Make sure my easel's tight so it doesn't shift. So there's the setup. Um, so I'm a lefty. Um, so here's my left hand. I draw with my left hand. Um, 
For me, it's helpful to have my easel on the left side of my body um, and then have my right side open. If I were a righty, it probably it'd be uncomfortable for me to draw like this because I'm like looking over my shoulder and it just it's a strain. Whereas if I have my right side open, which I don't use my right hand to draw, I could just I could easily look at the hippo, Samantha, my sheet of paper, and I'm not having to like look over my shoulder or anything like that. Um, so lefties, you can set up. Make sure your easel's on the left side of your body. Righties, um, just make sure your easel's on the right side of your body. Just um, you can make it easier on yourself. Um, and then you could adjust your table and your object accordingly. Um, Night, you have just got that little box there, so the Samantha's like eye level with me. Makes it easier for me to see her. Um, so I guess um, with observational drawing, um, one technique or one principle, not a technique, a principle you want to consider is um, proportion. So that's how parts relate to a whole. Um, so I guess we're going to look, okay, there's a part of Samantha her head. I'm going to compare that to her body. So I'm going to move my hand over. I didn't really move my fingers all that much, but you can see her body is shorter than her head. So just kind of comparing the two to one another. There we go. There we go. Body. Her body shorter than her head. Um, you can also, when you're looking at your um, object, you can use like a, a pencil, your pen, um, and you can imagine that you're laying it on a flat piece of glass. So I almost think like you're a mime, like how mimes do that whole look number where they pretend they're in a wall. So do that with your pencil. So like pretend you're laying it on a wall and you could or maybe a glass window, and you're placing it against your object, and you're like, okay. Measuring Samantha's head, comparing it to her body. Her head is indeed longer than her body. Um, so maybe in the video that looked like it was a different angle that I was trying to line up exactly with. Um, her head and her little body. Um, so that's, um, so I guess, um, like using those parts and comparing the two to another, so like Samantha's head would be a unit. So, um, would be a better example of units, so like something small would work, so, um, there we go. So I got Samantha's eye, so there's one, two. Four. So Samantha is four eyes tall. So that it's almost kind of like feet, like the, you know the um, you know, measuring system we use here in the states. So you know somebody is six feet tall. So foot's generally you know twelve inches is the size of like a full grown man's foot. So that's like a unit. So we're making our own units in a similar fashion. Um, but um, yeah, I guess um, so. Taking those techniques into account. Oh, one more technique, um, using an angle tool. So you can use your pencil or whatever, maybe like, maybe not your pencil, but another tool that you're currently using. Um, and what you do is you just line it up with your object to um, consider the angle. So I'm kind of like lining that pencil up with the Samantha's nose there. Seeing how her nose compares to her, to her eye, so that's like a, it's a, like a wider angle. Maybe think about the angle of her back, how it lines up with her ear. So that's something that helps you translate this like three-dimensional object into a flat, two-dimensional drawing. So there's a little backside. And then her, um, 
her feet and her chin are pretty level, a little horizontal. Um, so I guess you could do that as you're looking at your object. So imagine that you're kind of carving your, your um, thing out from like a block or something. Um, so I hope that hope that helps. So um, then we'll get into making the pencil sketch. Um, you might, probably won't be able to see what I'm sketching from this distance, but I'll bring the sheet of paper up to you. So you want to start with big, um, gentle marks. And I guess after like looking at Samantha the hippo, for so long, I took note that her neck is wider than her body. And also I remember that her head is longer than her body. And that she's about five eyes, four to five eyes tall. So, um, yeah, just made a and we'll go back into it, make it a little darker for the sake of the video. You see that sketch how faint it is so that's um usually how you want to start just a really you know light lines that are easy to erase and you start with those big simple shapes so i didn't get like super concentrated on samantha's ears or her eyes or her feet kind of gave everything the same treatment just made a simple shape and I'm making sure that they all relate to each other um, so I guess I'll, yeah, I'll go in and make some corrections. Corrections are good. It means you're taking time to get to know your um, whole thing and your drawing. I'm going to start using that angle, angle tool. as specific as possible. And I guess at first, you know, maybe it feels awkward or, you know, we're not used to holding so many things while we're making a drawing or using an easel, but it, if you practice, it becomes second nature. around a little bit. So I guess by getting the angle tool in there, you can see how it's a little more refined, looks more like Samantha the toy. Um, so now I'll get in there with a permanent marker. I feel confident enough, like I, like I know what I'm looking at.
time when you can come up a little closer. Alright, well I'll make the drawing real quick and I'll bring it up close to you. But I guess I'm going to just see how my wrist is moving and such and um, try to copy that. And yeah, all these techniques, um, I'm indebt indebted to um, Galena and Winska. Um, she taught me at UF. It was a figure drawing class. Um, but learned a lot about these like observational techniques. And also Kinsey. Um, sadly, he um, passed away not not too long ago. But um, yeah, I learned from him during my time at UGA, an amazing um, figurative sculptor and um, draftsman. Learned so much from him. So, um, yeah, I'm very, very thankful. I guess um, I just got the basic outline there for the most part. I have a few the basic outline. Um, have a few contours inside. Um, so that's just the start. You see, I'm not getting too involved in like the nose or the eye or the ears. I'm just kind of moving all around the drawing. Um, I'm gonna go back in there and um, add some. Uh, thicker lines for variety also to describe maybe how like the Samantha's leg is overlapping her tummy and her chin how it's in the front um, and also describe some of that um, seeing this more finished drawing that there's that hairy texture so I'll add some of those marks as well um, Get that, um, let me see, um, get some of those drop shadows in there. Oh, you can see the drop shadow, that's good. And um, you don't be afraid to let that drop shadow break from before, so you don't want it to feel like a 
thick outline. You want it to kind of have a shape of its own. Um, bring this up a little closer so you can so you see how the little tail is not attached to the body anymore. There's a bit of a gap, so it feels like there's light that's getting blocked by the hippo. Same with the chin, so it kind of bumps out a little bit. It shows that it's kind of raised up rather than just kind of making the line kind of thicker. Um, Um, some drop shadows, some swelling and tapering contours. I'll add some of the hair now. And I guess I'm, yeah, I got this nice little kind of pre-made contour. There's like a lighter line going down Samantha the hippo's back. Um, also, there are some seams going across the body too. I'll draw that. I'm noticing the um, for the hair on Samantha, they're kind of curving around each of these kind of spherical forms. So I'm not making them all go in the same direction, but they have their different direction according to their placement. Um, so you can see these marks on the body are just going up and down, whereas these marks on the head are a little more diagonal. Um, so it just makes it feel more 3D. There's some, there's some lines, so they're pretty uniform. I'm going to make some denser, shorter lines around these seams where it's almost kind of like the spheres rotating away from us. Um, I'll do that so you can see how it kind of makes it just feel a little more dimensional.
can see a little bit of that change there. It almost kind of feels like there's a shadow in the um, Samantha's cheek. Um, but I guess, yeah, I'll go in there and erase. Um, get rid of some of this. You can't really see them here, but I'm going to erase the pencil marks. Um, Oh, and um, it's also good to make sure your ink's dry. Thankfully, for permanent markers, the ink dries pretty quick. But um, if you're using any other mark, you might want to just wait a minute or at least 30 seconds just to see the ink dry so it doesn't smudge when you're erasing. we go we got our one cool thing drawing my one cool thing is Samantha the purple hippo dog toy Pretty up close there she is she's smiling and saying hello but um yeah thank you so much for watching and I hope this helps see you next time this is Heather Joshi bye